Hi there, Internet. I'm Jake. And I'm Niall. And we're here with the first episode of Readiness Report. Niall and I are both employees at the friendly local gaming store in Las Vegas, Nevada called Little Shop of Magic. And being game store employees, we hear a lot of opinions about games. Because if there's one thing gamers love as much as gaming, it's sharing their opinions about the games. And we're here to share our opinions as well. And what better way to share opinions than publicly? And what better public way than the internet? For our first episode, we're going to be going over something that's always a source of great debate between us as well as the other people in our store. We're going to be covering the most recent wave of ships for the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game from Fantasy Flight Games. So the first ship we're going to go over is the Lambda Clash Shuttle. Um, you know, it, to me it's a little weird in the game. It's the last plausible ship that they could have pulled for the Imperials from the movies. But it doesn't feel right in a dogfight to me. It's a Lear jet for Imperial officers, essentially. And it's not a primary combat vehicle. So, you know, they put it in here as a support role, which I guess is the best way they can include it. But it, it doesn't feel right in the game to me, as far as just purely fluff-wise of Star Wars. But it does pack a punch. Three attack dice, that's the same as an X-Wing. And five hull, five shield, that's pretty strong. I mean, it has the agility of a a YT-1300, but who cares when it's so cheap? You know, it's it's a pretty good-looking model. It's got a really decent paint job. The wings fold up and down. That's a really cool feature. My opinion, though, way too white. Way too white? Way too clean. Yeah, I guess it's not exactly Shuttle Tidarium, is it? No. So, the next ship we're going over is the TIE Bomber. Uh, it was the next obvious inclusion for the Imperial forces in this game. It's the last fighter strike size craft that they uh, had in the movies. And, you know, it, it feels pretty at home in this game. It's just, it's a slow-moving fighter, essentially. Uh, just can pack a punch. Packs a wall up. It can carry two missiles, two torpedoes, torpedoes a bomb. Yeah, it's it's got ordnance for days. And it's a really good-looking model, just like the rest of them. Just make sure that six-hole lasts you. So the next shipper uh, covering here is the Hawk 290. Uh, when Fantasy Flight first released the list of ships that were coming out in this wave, my very first thought was, really? The Moldy Crow is the first expanded universe ship they're going to go with? Yeah, it was featured in two video games. Yeah, it was featured in Dark Forces and Dark Forces 2, Jedi yeah, Knight. I mean, it's not a bad ship. It seems an appropriate for, fit for the game. However, I would have easily picked the Z-95 Headhunter or the Outrider to be the first expanded universe ships they went with. In this game, definitely a support ship. Absolutely a support ship. Obviously meant to tag team with the B-Wing. Uh, it's got abilities that augment the other ships in your fleet. Definitely not a heavy hitter, though. No, one attack die, not not going to cut it. It's not going to win you games. And even with the turret that it comes with, you have to spend a focus yeah. to use it. And while there's, it has the ability to save focus, depending on which configuration you take, you know, it's a lot of points to, Quickly to adds include up. it in. But it is a gorgeous paint job. By far the best in this set. So the next ship we're going to go over is the last ship from this wave. It's the B-Wing. You know, it was the next obvious choice for the Rebel fleet. It was the last ship that they showed for the Rebels uh, in the movie that they hadn't done yet. Obviously it's, my favorite. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool ship. I'm excited to try it out. It can take two proton torpedoes, so, or even better, the advanced proton torpedoes that it comes with. And with both of those, you throw on the fire control system that lets it uh, create a target lock on an enemy after it attacks. And you've got yourself a pretty sweet uh, Lambda killer here. You know, if the dice are in, you can kill a Lambda in two turns with this thing. Yeah, definitely a lot of firepower, but very fragile. Five shield, but only three hull. Yeah, I feel like it either needed, you know, a bit better defenses or needed to be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, a points little bit wise. of a cut off on the points would have been a little more comfortable. Yeah, but it is a pretty cool looking miniature. Uh, I I really wish they could have mounted it sideways in some way. I know it's kind of challenging, but you know, as it stands, it's not bad. Definitely, it's my favorite miniature for this wave. Yeah, and it is. It looks a little strange on the table because of the way it's mounted on the base. The entirety of the fighter is in the front half of the base, and the 
cannons on it actually spill over the front of the base a little bit. But yes. overall, probably the ship I'm most excited to try out. It's definitely meant to be uh, supported by the Hawk 290. But the only problem I'm seeing here is that to do it right is about 70 points in a 100-point tournament list. That's a big chunk. That really only leaves you room for one more fighter. So, of course, with the new wave of X-Wing comes a new set of upgrade cards, crew cards, weapons cards, various cool things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite I'm most excited about, obviously, is the Advanced Proton Torpedoes. You know, it's finally, there's something that's a definite fighter killer for the Rebels. It will be, or the Imperials as well, it's pretty much a guaranteed, a guaranteed dead TIE fighter, which means it'll easily earn its points back regardless of how low point value of a tie you're killing. Definitely. But then again, if you send it after something like Sunter Fell or Fell's Wrath... Definitely or, worth it. Definitely worth it. Or even Darth Vader in his advanced tie, it'll pretty much kill anything in one hit, especially if you uh, team it up with the Moldy Crow fully kitted out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... I'm excited to blow stuff up with it. The Obviously, the strangest card is Darth Vader. Yeah, he's, he's a little you, Yeah, weird. you do two damage to yourself, and you cause a crit to the enemy... Not sure how that's working in the game, but gameplay-wise, if you feel like gambling and you want to get that last hull point off a guy, go for it. Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, what's actually theoretically happening, were you to witness the events of Darth Vader doing whatever he's doing? No idea, you know. Uh, it's a little strange, but, I mean, how many points is he? Three. Three? Three? Uh, I guess if you just have three loose points that you don't know what to do with. And you feel like putting Darth Vader in a shuttle. Yeah. I'm also very excited about the fire control system when tag teamed with proton torpedoes. Obvious choice to take. It's only two points, you know. And you attack an enemy fighter, automatically get a target lock on it. That way you don't have to waste an action later dealing with that. Uh, especially when, if you focus and fire those advanced proton torpedoes... Dead. You, yeah, pretty much dead fighter, because you get to choose three of those blank dice results, turn them into focus icons, then if you use that focus, dead TIE fighter. Pretty much instantly. Bought the, bought the whole farm this time. Yeah. My other favorite is the Rebel Captive. So the first time a ship shoots at this ship with the title card, they take the stress. Yeah, that, that can cause... Uh, some issues, you know, obviously not an issue for Tycho, but everyone else is going to have a problem with that. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to change up their game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm also pretty excited about the Moldy Crow. You know, I I, I mean, you know, it's it, like I said, it's a strange addition to the game, but I'm excited for the ship. I like the Jedi Knight series, uh, so I'm excited to use the Moldy Crow uh, just based on that. But gameplay-wise, pretty cool. You know, it... Very. Yeah, you don't have to remove your focus tokens that you're in phase. When combined with the other things that the Hawk 290 is capable of, combining it with the right crew, it's you know well worth its three points. Oh, it will earn its points back like that. And the pursuit lasers. So I'm excited to put these on big ships. I don't know about you. <laughs> Free damage? I'm not excited for you to put it on big ships. Why not? Uh, well, you know, I always liked the ability of you know ramming into the back of an enemy big ship so that it couldn't shoot at me. Okay. But, no, you have to force your opponent. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to cause some issues. I'm going to have to definitely change up the game a little bit. And for two points, if you got the space, maybe you want to take it. Yeah, it's pretty cheap for the cool things it does. Mm -hmm. uh, also, well worth it for the Hawk 290, the Recon Specialist. When you take a focus action, you get an extra focus. You and can... definitely good when it's paired against the Blaster Turret. Yeah, you... Or even with uh, when you take the pilot or uh, Kyle Katarn for the ship, you know it. He lets you take a focus, put it on a allied ship. Oh yeah, definitely dish out all that focus. Yeah, Stay I mean, focused, you get guys. you get two focus. Hand it, hand one off to an ally. Use one yourself or hold on to it because if you have the multi crew title card, you can hold on to it till next turn. Yep. You know, with all this focus floating around, if you take the turret, the blaster turret that it comes with, you know, it becomes. A bit more viable in combat on its own, and also definitely very supportive when tagged with any of the, with either of the bombers, the B-wing, or the Y-wing. Yeah, and another unique card is the title card for the shuttle. So Vader's shuttle can target lock you anywhere on the board. <laughs> Combine that with the shuttle pilot allows you to share a target lock. 
it's pretty good. Yeah, especially that's... if you're using a uh, tie interceptor. Yeah, it's, well, that's or the tie bomber for that matter. With, oh yeah. I mean, instantly you've got all this ordnance target locked, and the tie bomber doesn't have to worry about using his own action, so he can then focus and use his heavy proton torpedoes to basically instant kill any of the fighters on the rebel side. Oh, definitely. Or put a serious, serious dent in the YT-1300. Give it a really bad bloody nose. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're about to sit down and play a game of X-Wing using some of the new ships and some of the old ships because, well, frankly, this new wave doesn't play very well by itself. So uh, I guess starting with my list over here and playing the Rebels, I've got a B-Wing piloted by 10 Num. I have two advanced proton torpedoes and a fire control system. Then I have the Hawk 290 piloted by Kyle Katarn, the Moldy Crow title card and recon specialist. And lastly, I have a rookie pilot with proton torpedoes and R2 F2 in an X Wing. All right, and as you can see, I am the counterpart to him. I'm playing the Imperials. I have Dark Curse. I have Backstabber. I have Night Beast. I have a Scimitar Squadron pilot who has concussion missiles, cluster missiles, and proton bomb, and an Omnicron group pilot with a Rebel captive. That is so many ships. All right, so this is the beginning of combat of turn four. Uh, the X-Wing got blown up in the second turn, got ganged up on by two TIE fighters, unfortunately. Uh, the Lambda here, as you can see, is way over here on the edge of the battlefield. It's nowhere near anything important. Its maneuver dial just isn't letting it stay in the game. Really, yeah, it's really hard to keep keep up in that dogfight. Uh, as you can see, the Hawk has managed to accumulate six focus tokens, and it's been using focus every turn for various things. And it's also been handing him off to the B-wing as well. All right. Um, so Ten Nub looks like has the first shot this turn. Uh, he's gonna fire at Night Beast here. All right, that's a hit and a crit. All right, I have one evade token. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so I got one evade, and I'll spend my token here to cancel that crit. All right. Uh, Backstabber's next? Yep. He gets three because he's outside the firing arc of Kyle Katarn. And I'll get one hit and two misses. All right. All right, that's a blank and a focus. So I'll... Use a focus, dodge that. Okay, next should be... Alright, next is Kyle Katarn. Yeah. Alright, point blank at this TIE Bomber here. It gets that extra attack die. And all the focus. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be helpful at all. Uh, it's too blank, didn't do anything anyway. Okay. Uh, Night Beast is going to go next. He gets three for being at range one. He's going to shoot at Kyle Katarn as well. He's going to get a hit and a crit and a blank. Hit, a crit, and a blank. Let's see here. Let's try using the proper dice. All right. That's a blank and a focus. So I can get rid of one damage, but still not going to save it. Still does the last damage to the Hawk. And unfortunately, that's gone. And I lose all of that focus. And the bomber doesn't get to shoot anyone. Nope, because I am out of your firing arc. Just outside. Oh well. Darn, don't get to shoot at it. Moving along. Alright, so this is at the end of movement of turn 5. Uh, all the ships have moved, but there's one last thing to resolve in the movement sequence. And this proton bomb is about to go off. Because I happen to be in range 1. Yep, we, so we when... measured it out. I am in range 1. So what happens with this thing? Alright, so proton bomb token. When this bomb token detonates, deal one face-up damage card to each ship at range 1. Then discard this token. Alright, so does a critical? No, it's a face-up damage. Different. Alright, let's see here. That's devastating. Stunned pilot. After you execute a maneuver that causes you to overlap either another ship or an obstacle token, suffer one damage. Well, that's going to suck next turn with that asteroid right there, isn't it? A little bit. All right. Um, so I ten have... Ten nubs first. Yeah, ten nubs first. I have a target lock right there on Night Beast, so I think I'm going to shoot a proton torpedo at it. Advanced proton torpedo, rather. That's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Take the target lock off. This And is... he got that target lock from the... Yeah, at the end of last turn, we remember that... Um, because he 
because of the uh, fire control system, since he shot at Night Beast, he automatically got the target lock. Mm -hmm. So here comes five dice. Ouch. That's one hit and two crits. All I'll right. take it. See what we can do. All right, one evade. So I take two crits. Yeah, you do. First one. Munitions failure. Immediately choose one weapon system for your secondary weapon upgrades and discard it. Then flip this card face down. And the second one is the same thing, a munitions failure. Not that big a deal on a TIE Fighter. No, I was really, really hoping for one of the two hull damage cards. That would have been the end for me. <laughs> well, for Night Beast, anyway. Yeah. All right, looks like the only thing else that can fire is the TIE Bomber. Yep, and he gets two dice at range two. Looks like one hit. One hit. That's no dodge, so I'll lose a shield. Right. All right. All right, so this is the end of turn six. Uh, Ten Nums managed to remove his last two shields from flying through that asteroid. He took one damage automatically from the minor hull breach, and he took one damage because I rolled a hit when flying through it. But he did manage to take out Night Beast. Night Beast, uh, he, Night Beast would have dodged all that damage too, but he wasn't able to dodge the last critical Yeah, because I of had. Ten Nums' ability. Yep, no token, so... I had to take it. And in addition, the Lambda class shuttle is starting to catch up. But it's not quite there. Not yet. quite there. Alright, so turn seven was really boring. We had no firing, it was just moving around. Yep. All battling for position. Uh here we are after movement of turn eight. This does not look good for Ten Nub. Ten Nub might not go home tonight. I mean, don't get me wrong, Ten Nub's a badass, but this he's outnumbered. He's outgunned. A little bit. Alright, he does get first shot though, so I'm gonna try to take out that B-Wing. Uh so it's range two, it looks like. Yeah. Probably, yes, yeah, so no additional dice. Okay. Three dice. And you have a target lock. I do have a target lock. So let's see here. All right, that's uh, two hits and a focus. I'll go ahead and use that target lock, and we'll redo that that focus hit or that focus roll. All right, so there's a third hit. All right, I get two. Totally worth it. And focus in a blank. So I take three hits. Yeah, that was not gonna kill it, is it? No, nah, it's got six hole. Oh, that's disappointing. All right, so my first is. Backstabber. Gets two dice since he's not outside your firing arc. Two hits. It doesn't even matter what I roll here. I only get the one dodge die. He only has one damage left. I got a dodge, but he still takes a hit. A little too much for 10 nub. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the shuttle didn't get to shoot again. <laughs> Stupid shit. Well, I gotta say, that was... A pretty brutal game. Um, I mean, I, I think I called it in the first turn, right? I was saying I was going to lose this one. You did indeed. Yeah. But it got kind of close there with well, uh, Tenno being able to kill everyone. I wouldn't say I got close. I got close to doing more damage. Oh, yes. I wouldn't say it was ever very close. Not when I lost the rookie pilot in the first turn. No, but that's what happens when three ships shoot at you. That's true. You know, uh, Tenno, he didn't kill everything on the board. But he was responsible for 100% of my kills. Mm -hmm. You know, I I really like the B-Wing. I gotta say, I think it might become a standard ship in my tournament list. Yeah. You know, the I just I really do like it. Its ability to take two advanced proton torpedoes that dishes out a lot of damage. Very tough. Very, Very tough. tough. Yeah, it was. I mean, I had you chasing me all over the board there at the end. Mm -hmm. But the and I I gotta say I like the Hawk overall. I think it might be a little a little pricey for what it can do. So do I. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that statement. You know, that one attack die, not very helpful. No, but you know, if you if you'd have put the if I'd have put the turret on it, it certainly had the focus to spend on the, yes, the it turret. Did. <laughs> I yes, mean it did. I had what, as much as six focus on it there? Yeah. In like turn three or four. You know, it it was an interesting way an interesting mechanic. I think it's very situational. I feel like it can make a difference, but you have to set it up perfectly. Yes. And you... I agree. You know, it, it can't get in the way of the ship it's primarily supporting. 
And it did on one turn. Did not help at all by doing that. But, uh, you know, overall, I, I like the Hawk. I think I'll still use it for friendly games, you know, pickup games. I just might not use it for a tournament list. Yeah, it's going to be a tough call. Uh, you're going to probably have to design your entire squadron around it. Yeah, it's definitely going to have to be the center point with everything arrayed around it because I really think that the Hawk isn't entirely useful if it doesn't have this configuration of the title card for the Moldy Crow, Kyle Katarn as your pilot, and the Recon Specialist to give you those extra focus. Yes. You know, without that, I feel like it's just a underpowered, you know, underwhelming ship yeah, in combat. Yeah, very much so. It needs all these things to be a good support ship. Yes, I agree. But, man, that TIE Bomber. Yeah, that I, oh. I managed to get off all my ordnance, which was pretty impressive. Um, you might have seen in the video, I forgot about the bomb until after I moved it. But when we moved it back, I got that one hit I needed, and that proved very critical. Oh, man, that... It yeah, it, it went through the asteroid right after that, which... Got you know, a, from your crit, got another hit? Yeah, that was that, that was, was bad. That, that was, was rough. Really bad. The the missiles kind of so so. But I mean, you know, we already knew how the missiles were from yeah. previous expansions. I I think if you'd have maybe dropped the concussion missile, put a proton torpedo or advanced proton torpedo on it, uh, you could have taken that B wing out a lot sooner because um, you know there was one of your Tie Fighters that never really did anything. No. You know, it never really got a shot lined up. It, you know, helped, I guess it helped against the X-Wing, but you could have done that with the two ships, honestly. Very true. But, you know, if you had taken the Proton Torpedo on it instead, there was that turn where he had a shot lined up, but he couldn't take it. You know, all he could do was fire the lasers. If he had had the Proton Torpedoes, he could have taken that beaming out a lot sooner. Yeah. On the subject of usefulness... How'd you like that shuttle? <laughs> the Lambda shuttle. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was... As it must have been sh Shuttle Tiderian. Yeah, it was flying casual this whole game. Oh, yes, it was. You know, it um, it just kind of wandered off. Said, you know what? I'm I don't need do this. i my own thing. Yeah. 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 I don't need this game. This is too, I don't need this battle. I'm going to go over here now. I really was hoping to, you know, mix it up a little, but I never, I just never got the opportunity to, and its maneuver dial is so limited, you know, I was doing as many quick maneuvers as I could. I mean, my fastest green speed was two, and that's what I did to get rid of my stress, but yeah. there wasn't a whole lot I could do after that. Um, you know, it, it got that one shot off, didn't really do a whole lot. Nope, not after that. You know, and it... It was basically seemed to me just to be a point sink in your force for this for this game. Definitely. You know, I could see how in the future it could be super helpful because it can take a beating. All your other ships can die, and you still have this stupid Lambda shuttle flying around. Yeah. Aggravate, yes. Aggravating Rogue Squadron or whomever. I think next time, Anti-Pursuit Lasers. Because maybe then I'll be able to mix it up and yeah. maneuver dial and make you run into me. Yeah, that's going to... Be an interesting mechanic to try and force upon your opponent. Yeah, I I do like that I took the uh the rebel up or the rebel captive. Rebel captive. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it just didn't get used. You had nope. better targets the whole game. Yep. You had targets that I were mean, in front of you. Yeah, targets that I knew you know were obviously a better target because it's well I can spend three turns plinking at the lambda and take away four attack dice, or I can spend one turn take out a tie fighter and remove two attack dice. Yeah, in the future, if I take it, I think I want to take the top pilot because it forces mm -hmm. your opponent to put a target lock on you if they can. You know, so it limits the option, your yeah, opponent's options. Yep. So you, you basically sink all the enemy's torpedoes into you until it's gone. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, your TIE fighters are flying around, not worrying about torpedoes, not worrying about missiles. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Well, we'll see how it goes in the future. I really like the B-Wing. I want to like the Hawk. I really think I just really want to like the Hawk 290. And it might be because I like that video game so much. Yeah. I really like the Bomber. Oh, yeah. The Bomber's definitely worth its points. Oh, yes. Hands down. I don't know if I'll include two, but one, pretty solid. Yep. Well, and, and Lambda, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we can uh, call this game officially over with then, what do you think? Absolutely. And let's clean up this table.
Well, that's it for the first episode of the Readiness Report. We hope you all liked it because we need to justify being here after hours to our boss. If you want more from us in our store, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the other videos there. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Shop of Magic so you can get more gaming industry news and find out what's going on in the store. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. So it's the least maneuverable fighter craft for the Rebels? But it can barrel roll?